So um, first I want to say thank you for, for having this space and the vision to have this space. But um, also, tell us a little bit about what was the initial idea and why you wanted to open up the 1917 Bistro and um, maybe some of the other things that you do as outreach outside of the food part of it. Well, um, I opened up 1917 American Bistro because I, I've always wanted to, to own a restaurant. And uh, when my life shifted gears a few years ago with, uh, with the Big Three, I um, uh, took the opportunity and asked permission for my wife and took off and I ran. And I haven't stopped running since. And so far, the restaurant took off and I'm running behind it trying to catch up with it. Uh, the success of the restaurant, it is word of mouth, and I'm really, really thankful that people really enjoy the bistro. Um, I, um, with, when it comes to the art, I've always been a big fan of art, just art, period. Rather, rather it's pictures, rather it's photos, or music, or poetry. I love art. We do quite a bit of it here. On Wednesdays, we have poetry night. It's open mic and it's uncensored. Um, outside of that, what I wanted to make sure that I did was decorated the walls with local artists. And I let them do it for free and I rotate them once a month. I think there's some outreach things that we have crossed over past with that I think is amazing that people in the city of Detroit or beyond here need to know that you're doing. Yeah, I always like to try to help the youth out because the reality of it is they are our future. Somebody has to reach back. All of us reach back. Just imagine if every adult reached back and grabbed one child just to help them out a little bit out of their lives. It will make such a huge difference. Right. So we have to give back because it's critical. It's critical for our future. It's mm -hmm. criti critical for everyone's future. So we have to give back. And uh, I have uh, the summer programs here where I allow youths to come in and they learn um, a lot about the restaurant business. They learn how to, uh, they learn work ethics. Okay. And it's critical and that will help you maintain employment. Okay. Um, I've had a job ever since I was 13 years old. So you give them internships and I training? I give them internships and training. Okay, the name of the show is called The Resurrection of the Afro. And I grew up in the 70s and my mother picked out her hair every day and I stood and watched her in the bathroom pick out her hair and, you know, pat it and make it perfect and I had an afro and so I wanted to do something um, with that theme in mind and I love the afro, I love big hair, I like natural hair and I'm also very tactile. So in making my work, my hands are always engaged in the feel of the paper or the paint, and very often, even though I'm painting with brushes, I'm also moving the paint with my hands or with my fingers. So um, that's really how it started. Um, it kind of turned into a whole nother animal because I started researching African hairstyles where um, Americans are influenced by them and what they meant. So there's a whole story of resistance behind the Afro or the fro, as we call it. Um, so I like that idea and I think I'm gonna keep going with it. I also find that there's more women who are wearing natural hair of recent, I'd say in the last maybe three to five years. And so um, I like to kind of document what's happening in my life by the artwork and maybe it's not always as obvious, but I used to do hair and so, um, the movement of what that means, the lines that I make, the colors that I choose, they all have a reference to how I grew up and some of the things that I had to do um, just to make money as a young woman. So um, I like the idea of the head as being the, the most important part of your body, but the hair also being kind of tentacles, you know, to um, receive messages from the spirit. Um, I also think of the Afro as um, kind of like the halo, you know, in the, the Black Madonna, not necessarily the gold spear that's behind them, but the hair. Um, Barclay Hendricks is a, a very important artist to me. Um, he did a lot of portraits of women and men with afros. Um, and some of my greatest uh, musicians that are my muse, or the people that inspire me, um, are from the 70s, and a lot of them also wore afros, like Betty Davis, or Jimi Hendrix was a little freaky afro, but I liked it, I liked it. 
Um, even the Commodore is in the 70s, you know, from my mother's favorite song of Zoom. I look at the album cover and I, I see them. Um, so that's where the work comes from. But the mane of the hair and the head being the most important part of the body and it makes the decisions that your body must follow. And so that's how the show started or the idea of the show, the resurrection of the Afro. This piece is um, Yemaya and Hoshun. I like allegorical um, images or things that are representational of um, like myths, okay. mythology. Okay. Right, so Yemaya and um, Oshun are African deity that represent the waters or the rivers and they typically take care of children that are motherless and they also take care of people when they've been harmed in some way. Mm -hmm. So um, one is Yemaya and the other one is Oshun and they're having a conversation. You know, but I envision them as women with afros. Right. You know, <laughs> so um, Oshun okay, is in the blue, together. Yemaya is in the gold. And they're on the bed of the water, you see the fish. But they're having a conversation and I also think of, um, you know, music is my muse. So I think of the song Black Butterfly. Oh yeah. And it's so I like right <laughs> exactly. So Black Butterfly. Right, right. So I was thinking of that, listening to it when I was making the piece. So that's what that piece is about. Mm -hmm.